I'm Dave Shaw from Morris Magnetos. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is installing a magneto on a generator motor, in this case a 1967 shovel head. And uh, before we begin, here are the tools you'll need. First we're going to begin with removing the stock distributor. Uh, what we've done here is uh, removed the exhaust and taken a push rod clip off to make life easier for ourselves. We've removed the screw on the cover on the distributor. Give us access to taking the distributor apart. After the cover is removed, you'll need to take the distributor apart. so that it can come out more easily. To do that, you need to remove the nuts from the two studs on top here. Take the cover off. Just set it aside. In fact, you can just disconnect your wire and pull it right out of the way. Next, you need to remove the bolt on the bolt or, or nut, whatever you have, on the horseshoe clamp. And you want to be careful here because any debris down there, you don't want it to fall into the hole it'll be left when the distributor comes out. So at this point, wipe all around here. And now we're ready to just pull the distributor on up. It's helpful if you take a good sized piece of rag, stuff it in this hole so you don't get any debris in there while this thing's apart. You want to clean out these threads in here as we're going to be using thread locker on them. So give a little spray with some brake clean. And blow it out with some air. Okay, it looks pretty good in there. We're going to get the base out of the magneto box. The parts kit. and the magneto. This one we're installing today has a cast finish look to it, like the older magnetos. And uh, it's a sealed magneto like all of ours. What we've done is, for looks, put in holes and plugs without going through the inside, so it's just still a sealed unit. Next step is to get the parts out of the bag. Okay, next step is to put a little grease on the O-ring here, help it to slip into the motor. And, uh, and we'll go ahead and drop the drive down into the motor. What we've done here to make it a little easier is gone ahead in the instructions and cut the spring and put in the adjuster screws ahead of time, making it easier to just get in there now, instead of having to reach way in the back. Drive goes all the way down. This is a standard type magneto, which means that the magneto is going to turn only as fast as you turn the motor. In your choices of standard type magnetos, this unit fits the easiest. However, in some cases, with some cases, some heads, cylinders, combinations, some modification may be necessary for clearance. Now in this particular motor, we don't have any of that to deal with. Next we're going to take the cap off the magneto and deal with what's inside. So we're going to remove the cap by taking out the four screws. Now the points cam in this turns clockwise and if you'll notice, one lobe is fatter than the other lobe. 
The narrow lobe is for the front sonar, and everything's done with the front sonar. So what we want is the front cylinder, narrow lobe, to be just touching and the point's about to open. To do this, insert a 3 8 Allen wrench uh, in the base of the magneto. Turn the cam right to that point there. You can take your finger and hold it there if you'd like. Take out the Allen wrench. And what you want to do is look on this side and see what points toward the studs. Whether it's the point of an Allen or the flat of the Allen of the hex. Uh, in this case, it's pretty much the flat. So what we want is the drive to sit in the same position so that this can be dropped on and they, and they match. Okay, before we install the magneto, we have to get the motor into position. What we want is front cylinder timing mark. It's a very simple way to do this. We take out the rear spark plug. Turn the motor until we have front cylinder compression. It's very easy on this bike because we've got an open primary. I can feel front cylinder compression. Now what we want to do is find the piston. Don't drop anything in there, make sure it's long enough. And we want to keep going until the rear piston gets to the very top. Now with the timing plug out, very shortly after, we'll have our timing work. Okay, there we go. We've got the timing mark in the center of the hole. Rear piston is right around top, so we know that's the correct mark. Okay, now what we want to do is match the drive. So we want a flat aim toward the slot. Now in the kit you'll notice there's a spacer. The spacer goes between the bolt down tab and the motor. Now the purpose of that spacer is that when it's removed, the drive can come lower so the magneto goes in and the drive up to the magneto. Makes it easier to clear everything. So with that in mind, we're now going to pull the drive out to line up the hex. Now from the time that the gear engages and this begins to turn, until you get down to the height of the spacer, it's about one flat. So we'll start out with uh, on a flat, and around the time the O-ring drops in, that's when the gear engages. As you can see here, we've pretty much got what we'd like. We're going to check it, and if not, if we need to go just a little bit that way or a little bit that way, we pull the gear back up, go the way we need to go, plus a little, and we drop it back down, we've gone to a different position with the gears, 12 more degrees to that direction. There's two studs sticking down here and a hex sticking up on the drive here. So when you put the magneto in, all three are going to have to line up at the same time. And there we go. Now put your spacer back in place. Confirm that your magneto is still on the narrow lobe, just touching the points follower. Okay, now what we want to do, pull this back up a little further with the spacer in place. So now we'll run the bolt in. We're not yet putting that in permanent, so don't worry about tightening it just yet. Uh, the idea is to keep, have it aligned and 
with the spacer in place. In some places, on some uh, applications, you may not need to take the spacer out, but we didn't cut anything on these cylinder heads or anything like that, so in this case, we'll be taking the spacer back out when we take the mag head back off to put the cap on. Okay, so we've got the stud not run all the way in, but we do have to make sure the drive is all the way down against the spacer. At this point, we can go ahead and confirm that uh, the mag clears the case here. And we're good to go. Now we're going to set the timing in the base. And the way we do that is we hook up the timing tool between the magneto stud and ground. Stud and ground. Okay, next we need to get the timing tool. Timing tool is available on our website. And uh, what it does is tells us what's going on inside the magneto. It's not continuity. It knows when the points are opened and closed inside the magneto. One lead has to go on the kill stud. The other lead on ground. Doesn't matter which lead goes where. And as you can see, when we turn the magneto, it tells us the exact spot that the points are going to open. That's where we want to tighten the magneto. We need to set the screws in the base. That would be the inside screw is the advanced timing screw. I like to hold this one way in the amount of play that you have down there to do so. When you put it back in, you go the same way and everything remains the same. Okay, we'll be setting the timing adjustment screws, one on the inside, one on the outside. The one on the inside is for advanced timing. That's what we'll be setting first using the tool. It's best to shift the base to one direction as you're doing all this so everything remains the same. Every time you put the bolt in, shift it so it'll be right on. Now we know the magneto is just retarded from where the points are going to break. Screw up against the stud. We're going to start to back it out. Keeping the magneto pushed toward the advanced side. Right there, we get to our beep spot. Make sure the magneto is all the way down. That's our exact spot for timing. We've got the advanced timing all set. Retarded timing is going to be when the magneto moves between five eighths and three quarters of an inch outward. So now we want to take the outward screw and adjust that for the retarded timing. Okay, our timing is all set. Okay, now that we've got things set, we're going to take the mag head back off by taking the bolt back out. Now we want to remove the spacer. Screwdriver will be handy so it doesn't fall down in there. the bolt if you'd like, just drop the drive back down. Take the mag head off. Now we're going to put the cap back on. Now on the gasket you'll notice there's a, a round end and a kind of sawed off end there. You want to make sure that goes this way and matches the housing and the cap. Go ahead and put the cap back on. Now you've got to watch these two screws, uh, springs rather, sticking up are going to have to align with inside the cap here. So what you want to do is put the cap on straight. Get the back two screws started. And just do a little peekaboo. You'll be able to see in there the springs and the contacts. They both look okay. 
one of the springs isn't bent over or anything. Get the gasket in place there. Hold it down and screw it all the rest of the way. All snug down hand tight. And what you want to do is go another quarter to three eighths of a turn. And that's tight enough. You can pretty much feel that the torque is the same on all of them, and then you know you have it. Now, we haven't turned anything with the drive, so we know the magneto is still in position. Cap is on, narrow lobe just breaking the points. Now, before you put the mag head on, be sure and apply grease inside the hex. You want a goodly amount, so everything runs fine. Also, smear a little inside here, a little bit on the face. Okay, with it in place, pull the drive up, put in your spacer, and we're ready to put the bolt in. Loctite on there. When you open up the kit, you'll find these pieces here. Uh, and what these are for, these are all the parts that go on the studs on the bottom, the two studs. Um, these set the tension for the advanced retard mechanism. So, uh, what we've got to do first is grease up these brass washers. It's helpful to put some on both sides. Uh, the, the top side is because they're going to rub on the uh, mounting block. And by putting some on the bottom, you're able to just take the thing with your finger and go ahead and stick it up there. Push it up, it'll stay in place. Next, the lock washer. And finally, you want to put on the nut. Okay, we've got our brass washers, lock washers, and nuts secured. And what we've done is crank them down until the lock washer is about halfway compressed. That puts our tension on for the action here. We'll be doing final adjustment of it, but the next thing we need to do is install the advanced spring. So we want to take this end of it, hook it on the inside stud. Okay, we've got it hooked on the inside. We're going to go ahead and grab this, bring it out to this screw. And pop the end over. check our tension and we can feel it's a little easier coming this way than it is this way. The idea is you retard it, it stays there. Once the motorcycle is running, the vibration allows the spring to pull to the advanced position. Now how fast that advance action happens is up to you. Uh, depends how much tension you want to put on the nuts. You can have it at, uh, advanced as soon as the motorcycle is running or you can put more tension on and have it Wait until you're going down the road to advance. That's typically how I run it. Now we're ready for our final timing check. One lead on ground, one lead on kill stud. Okay, now for shutting this magneto off, you can use a kill stud lever on the kill stud. Uh, you don't need any wires on the bike. On this particular application, the owner of the bike is going to put a 
switch elsewhere because the exhaust is near the kill stud where it normally is on the inside. Now, if you want to run just the kill stud uh, wire, we can put the kill lead. We can put the uh, kill stud on the outside where it's more convenient. Okay, now we're ready to wire the magneto, and uh, I've got my wires here. We're going to run them through and uh, determine the length, cut them if we need to, and uh, get the ends put on, and uh, we'll be ready to go. We've got our wires cut to length. We're ready to put the boots on next. Make it easy, we're going to use this strong arm spray. Pretty amazing stuff. You can get it from strongarmbrand.com. Put a little on there. Okay, now, you want to have the wire stripped back, like what you see here. And fold, the, fold them over and put the terminals on with the wire in there. You're going to get real good contact that way. I'm going to put it on this side here. And we're going to take some pliers and crimp down the ends. We're going to slide these boots down part of the way. And we're all set to plug them up to the uh, magneto. Now we can go ahead and put the wires in the magneto. Make sure it's all the way down like that. Slide the boot in place. Shove the wires through. We're going to route these over the uh, intake manifold. We want to make sure we're not in the way of the uh, action of the throttle. And that's pretty good right there. And then we're ready to just plug the wires onto the spark plugs. I'm Dave Shaw with Morris Magneto. That's how you install an MM74E Magneto. We're going to go ahead and have the owner put the uh, kill wire on, put the exhaust back on, and uh, let's go ahead and see how she fires up.